Hello and welcome once again to ice hockey from the Olympics on Eurosport. Day 9, Russia against Czechoslovakia. Correction, the Czech Republic. And Paul Ferguson here with Richard Beaupre. We're taking a look right now at the highlights. The third period live will start in a moment. The Russians came out firing. Karpov came out from behind the net and took his opportunity cleanly. So the Russians draw first blood in this one against the Czech Republic. Let's look at this again. Karpov very quick. He slams the brakes on. Kastak, number 12, is trying to cover him. He's a forward, not able to get him. Karpov walking right up back out to the front of the goal and putting the puck in the net. Breeze goes out with the poke check, but that doesn't work, and goal number one is to Karpov at 442 of the first period. The Russians came out like a team possessed. Breeze was peppered from all angles. Again, we see a player allowed to walk out and pop it in over the red line. This time it's Denisov, and the score is 2-0, and the Russians looking very good indeed. Dmitry Denisov doing a lot of work on his own, taking a shot, getting the puck back, going to the back of the goal, and as you said, Paul, he comes right out to the front of the net. Nobody there but Petra Breza. Breza comes up with the first save, but not the second one. 5-22. The time of that goal, it took a while, but the Czech Republic started to get themselves back into the game. Kuchera doing a lot of work, got the backhander away. The rebound came out for Petra Herbeck, and that brought the Czechs a little closer in this one. The Czechs coming in on a three-on-two. The Russians trying to get back. The backhander is saved by Zuyev. But the second shot is there, and the Russians are caught watching the puck. Nobody picking up Rebek as he puts the puck in the goal. 15.05, the time of the goal. And still more scoring to come. For the moment, the Czechs under pressure. Kastak back on the ice, feeds it up, and a link on the breakaway makes no mistake. A beautiful pass from just over the blue. Look at this. Kastak missed a game earlier by taking a hard hit in one of the first games of the Olympics. They're glad to have him back in the lineup. A great pass ahead. A link puts it over Zuyev. And the Czech Republic were even at two. Two apiece, and that's the way the period ended. In the second period, more goals for the Russians. Tarasov was cruising along the blue line, and keep your eye on number 24, Nikolishin. He took his time, took the puck out from between the skates, and saw the goaltender was down, and picked his opening well. Again, we see players playing the puck, not the body, the Russians. Having a good whack at Breeza. He's well and out of his goal. Vakukul trying to play goaltender number four back there for the Czech Republic. He can't come up with a puck, and Nikolishin has the goal. Twelve twelve the time of the Nikolishin goal in the second period. Still more scoring to come for the Russians. Karpov, who picked up the first goal, is about to get the fourth. Time running down on the period. The loose puck, Breeze let it come out. And Karpov says, thank you very much. Petra Breeze, one of the most experienced goaltenders in these Olympic Games, doesn't very often make a mistake like that. Made the save quite easily. Couldn't hold on to the rebound. Karpov right on it with a backhander. 4-2 to the score, the Russians leading. Third period action coming up in a moment. Welcome back. We are live. Petra Breeze between the pipes. Zuyev at the other end of the rink. This is third period action. And the score is 4-2. The Russians leading the Czech Republic. And we're expecting a fine 20 minutes of ice hockey 
here in the Hacken Hall. This is day nine action. Zuyev getting set to go between the pipes. 16 saves in the first two periods. And Zuyev, who was replaced by Abramov earlier on in the competition, is back in goal for the Russians. And the Russians, Bopes, really have had their problems on and off the ice. They certainly have. Coach Viktor Tikhanov at present has made comments even that he is just totally dispossessed and disgusted with Russian hockey. He feels that the top league in Russia is a development league for the NHL now. He's not far off making comments like that. And it comes down to the individuals. Karpov, who has scored two goals in this game, allegedly was one of the players ticking off, went right to and had comments for it after one of their bad performances. And Karpov's answer was, well, when does the next plane leave? The players even just don't seem to have the heart that they used to have. The 92 team that picked up goal, big shot right on goal. Out of the 21 players, 19 have gone to the NHL, two have gone to play in Switzerland, and they're left with a young side that is not really tried and tested. We've said that before, and really the Russians are struggling. Right now they're leading the Czechs 4-2, but uh, they're not playing like the Russian teams of old. In the corner, Horova trying to take his man off the puck, and the Russians now with Tarasenko and Tornogayev right out front. Frieza goes down on the far side. Tupal, Dukuko, a bouncing puck. Shendelev moved right in, and Frieza from the side of the net. Guzmanov tried to bring it out, couldn't get it in front of the goal, and that shot all the way down the ice. Tarasenko and Torgayev going right at the check. Zuyev has to come out at his end of the ice, cover up the puck as Shendelev got back in a hurry. Good action from the Russians. Big hit right at the center, just inside the center red line. Play going on, Torgayev just going wide. Riza wouldn't have had that one. It would have been under his arm had it been on the net. Karpov took the shot and that bounced away. Tertitiany moved in to keep it in the zone. Orova with 135 gone on the period. Orova at the second attempt and the Russians still keep it in. Bezukladnikov moved in quickly. Griza was there. Orova unable to get it out of the zone. And Griza has to come up big. Breeza has had his share of action up and down, up and down. Great work by Breeza to come up with this puck. The Russians seem to be able to have second and third shots. The Czech Republic, Republican defensemen really aren't helping out Petra Breeza. Bouncing puck along the boards all the way back. Big shot. And again, Breeza gets hold of that one. Tartishny let it fly, fly from about 58 feet away. Russians changing their line, big shot right off the face off Tertizny, getting it all, but a clear view by Breeza, and he just lets it go right into the catching glove. Nikolishin steps into the face off circle, and that drops all the way back on the D, and the checks. Trying to bring it up and get something going. They know they have to pop a couple. This is all about positioning in the table, that's for sure. Remember, the bottom team in this group will most likely play the Swedes, who are the top team in the next group. If the Russians can hold on, they'll be ahead of the Czech Republic after this game. They'll both be 3-2 and two after their first five games. The Czechs would like to come back here and have this win to stay ahead of the Russians. It's a seesaw battle right now, but as you said, Paul, we keep mentioning it, but it's important that everybody knows one through four in the placings in both Group A and B is critical as to who's going to play who in the medal round. Number one in Group A plays number four in Group B. Number two in Group A plays number three in Group B, and they crisscross over. Interferences of Paul and Vinogradov. Vinogradov going in on Breeza as he came out of the net. He'd gotten rid of the puck. Breeza was interfered with. The Russians will be shorthanded for two minutes. The Czechs now with Kapusta. Kapusta drops it back. Time ticking down on the 
period as the Czechs move it up. They really haven't threatened as that goes in. Bouncing puck, Nikolishin. Serban Kapusta drops it all the way back. And the Czechs now setting it up. Kapusta gets a rough ride from Davidov. All the way along the boards. Stabiana goes after it, can't trap it in. And here comes Kudashov. Kudashov on the backhand. Serban couldn't get to him. Stabiana now collects. 113 on the power play. And which way is the power play going? Janetski drops it off. Kadlec for the Czechs. Kadlec slows it down, taps it right up the middle. Kuchera tries to get a handle on it. Ropat moves in, and now the Czechs bring it in deep. Kudashov goes after his man. Janetski quickly back to the blue line. Kadlec, he's got the big shot. Pops it into the hash marks. Janetski back to Kadlec along the blue line. Again, back to uh, Janetski right in front. Kadlec shot, rebound, shot. And Zuyev with Kuchera knocking on the door and Yunechki moving in quickly, makes the save. Dolezal still down. Dolezal, Yunechki, Kuchera right there. The shot coming from Kadlec. The Czechs have got this one set up nicely. Berezan had committed himself. A lot of time. And the Czechs trail by two. We'll take a look at Grisa who's sitting comfortably next to Ivan Linka. I should think he'll stay there, Paul. The face-off will be deep in Russian territory as Zuyev directed the puck over the plexiglass on the shot. You can see Tikhanov pointing at the two defensemen, telling them to spread out, possibly after they've got possession. And then he was going with circles with his fingers to the two forwards. In other words, stay deep, but let's do some curls. Open up a lane if you can. If not, let's keep the puck wide, pinch it off along the boards. Riza on the bench, the Czechs have thrown on an extra attacker. Both teams have a man in the box. 59 seconds on the game as Nikolishin talks through the faceoff. Horak, Hostak. Kostak is out there trying to get it free, and that bounces all the way back to the blue. The Czechs pepper it in. They've got to get two goals, not just one, so they can't stand around. Big shot upstairs, Vikuko! Oh, boy, was that a good shot! I'm going to have to question whether Zuyev saw it, though. It was a blast, Paul, but Zuyev didn't react very quickly. Doesn't matter. The Czechs have got one back. Two checks working hard in the corner. The puck comes back to Vakukul. He lets it ride. It does appear as though there was a little bit of confusion in front of Zuyev. Was there a tip in front? Vikuko gets credited with the goal. Still 45 seconds on the game. Good stuff by the checks. Keeping two men going after the puck. Riza is back in there momentarily because the face-off is at center again. The Czechs need possession. They need to throw it deep. And Riza needs to get right back off the ice. Again, we see an all-important face-off right at the end of a game. 45 seconds on the clock. Keep your eye on Briza. As the Czechs move down, he's going to come out. Horva. Horva taps it in. There goes Briza. The extra attacker is in there. Zuya flips it over the boards. And that's got to be a penalty for delay of game. It's an automatic penalty, yes. And this could provide all sorts of headaches for the Russians. Tikhanov is looking at his goaltender, Zuyev, trying to do the right thing by bouncing it off the plexi. He flipped it too high. Delay of game. Face-off should be in that zone. Hard to tell you were a goalie, Paul. You jumped on that one before the <laughs> puck was even over the boards. You could just see that it was going to go over the boards. You were on that. 34 seconds on the game, and what has this man done? Let's look at this again from the reverse angle. Horova throws the puck in. Zuyev doesn't actually take a look. He, he just clears it right straight to Abramov, his partner. The goaltender alertly on the bench with the glove save. That doesn't count as a shot on goal, by the way. 
again we see a timeout and uh, taken off again gives instructions to his defenseman and his forwards the faceoff will be deep in Russian territory it'll be two men in the box for the Russians one for the Czechs and if Breeze is out of the goal it's still going to give the um, Czech Republic a two-man advantage on the ice one way or the other it'll be a five on three Tikhanov talking it over with what he wants. We've seen this happen before. Penalties being taken in the last minute of a game. The Canadians with a costly one against the Americans the other day. The Americans coming back to level the score. And again, Breeze goes to the bench and stays there. Zuliev still discussing that with the officials. Boy, he can smile, but will he be smiling if the Czechs level the score? two, three Russian skaters and Horak tries to get it back as that's flipped up and we'll have another face-off. Face-off is critical. The Czechs needs possession. As soon as that puck is dropped, you can bet the Russian center is just going to be taken out and another Czech is going to get in there and try and grab the puck. Another delay out there as the officials pick something up off the ice and that'll kill off a little time Tikhanov jumps on the moment right away to give more instructions out there he knows exactly what he wants his center and defenseman to do Ivan Linka will have plans of his own Horak trying to get it back that's tagged along uh, the, board, uh, the boards rather and the Czechs pump it right into the corner. Time ticking down. Sorokin tries to get it out. He flips it high. And again, we have another whistle. But still 20 seconds left on the game. A little less room to operate now. Each team has returned one player back onto the ice. So now it's just the penalty to Zuyev that is being served by the Russians. With Breeze out of the net, it's six attackers going against five. Anxious moments for the Russians and the Czechs. That's five, including Zuyev. You can see four Russian skaters, six Czechs on the ice. A two-man advantage with the goaltender out. Horak. Big shot comes in. That took a deflection. Bounces over into the corner. V. Kukul is in there. Sorokin gets a tap to the far side. Ten seconds on the clock. Kudashov tries to get it out, but it's pinned against the boards. Five seconds now. That goes into the corner. Sorokin falls. Can the Czechs get it back and get the shot away? Here comes a one-timer, and that bobbles away and up high. Oh, so close. Sorokin goes back to Zuyev. What a finish. But the Russians go back and congratulate Zuyev. It could have all gone wrong for the goaltender. Zuyev has that look on his face like, yeah, no problem, guys. I knew this was going to happen all the time. The wasted seconds were right along the bench where four or five players came together and the Czechs just couldn't get the puck out. They got the shot away just before the buzzer, but Zuyev made the save. So the final score, Russia 4, the Czech Republic 3. And what a great finish to a great hockey game. Three periods of end-to-end -end ice hockey, non-stop action. Well, we're going to turn to Bopes now for his man of the match for the Czech Republic. The losers. I like the way that uh, Kemel Kastak played, number 12, the playmaker who has come back off an injury earlier in the games uh, from a leg check that he took early on. Really got stuck in. I thought he had a good game. And how about for the Russians? For the Russians, I'm going to go with Karpov. Why not? He's the guy that's been making the headlines with some of his comments or some of the alleged arguments that he's had with the coaching staff. I'm going to take Karpov nonetheless. Number 14, Valery Karpov played a good game. Paul, let me have a couple of picks from you. Nikolaitian, number 24 for the Russians. I thought he played well at center. He took a lot of draws and he won most of them. And for the Czechs, well, again, I don't know. I'll go for a forward. I thought uh, Serson played well. Thomas Serson, number 17, got stuck in. 
Uh, he didn't pick up a goal, but he really did help to keep a lot of pressure on the Russian defense. We're taking a look at the goals now that you may have missed if you joined us late. We joined the action in the third period. It really was an excellent hockey game. And this is the goal coming up by a link to level the score at two apiece in the first period. I think that everybody will have to say they've been treated to some great finishes in these Olympic Games. We've seen quite a few games come right down to the wire. Teams really pressing hard, going all out to get a tying goal or the winning goal. It's been good to watch. The exciting thing is that no team has sat back. Sure, it's only the first round. Sure, these teams are in the next medal round, but they're still gunning for top position. As we said, the top four teams of each group of six will qualify, but the top team in the group will play against the fourth place finishers in the second group. And that's all important because the fourth place finishers should be, should be a lot weaker than teams higher up the table. The German Finn game is critical. The Germans with six points right now, if they were to beat the Finns, they'd end up with eight. The Finns would have eight. The Germans would actually end up being the first seed just by beating the Finnish team. At present, the Czechs are stuck with six points. The Russians now have six, but by the Russians having just beaten the Czechs, the Russians will finish ahead of the Czechs. It all depends on what the Germans do now. The German-Finland game is coming up on uh, Eurosport later on this evening, so be sure to join us for that one. And since we're talking about that one, I'm going to put you on the spot again. Who are you going to pick? Well, I'm going to go with Finland based on the fact that they've scored 18 goals and they've only allowed three. I think it's going to be interesting to see what can the Germans put by the Finnish defense. And as far as the Germans are concerned, what can they do against Finland? They've played well against just about every other team in their group. And they look strong, but do they have the...